Hey everybody, KJ here, and today is the much requested how to paint a vehicle in iRacing. So before we get started, I wanna talk a little bit about my design process. I do an abstract process. I do not do a one-to-one -one paint off of a picture or anything like that. It's just not the style that I prefer. So with this tutorial, it's gonna be a little bit of my abstract process and how I make my paints. So going forward, there's a lot of information in the description below. I will be using Photoshop. If you don't wanna use Photoshop or you don't own Photoshop, you can download GIMP and follow along pretty easily. There is a link to all kinds of various resources that we're gonna use in terms of brushes, actions, and also patterns for our design. So you definitely wanna check that out below. And then afterwards, we have information on trading paints and information about the camera pack that we'll be using to get really nice stylized photos in iRacing. So without any more delay, let's jump into iRacing and download the template for the car that we'll be painting today. So open up an internet browser, go to the iRacing website and log in. Underneath the car here, you'll see where it says paint. We're going to go ahead and click that. As soon as it opens up, we'll see a section that says download templates. That's going to be where we go first. So up here in the top right of it, it says download car templates. We'll click that. Today we are working with the Aston Martin for the GT1, so we'll click here and start the download. As soon as that opens, we can extract the file that's in it. But before we leave this web page, let's jump to the wheels section. I like to have my wheels as the matte option, not chrome. It's all subjective, so just whatever you prefer. I know what color code I use for my rims. It happens to be right here, so I'll just paste that in. And I'll show you how to use the eyedropper and get all those values it's also worth mentioning you can put in your preferred testing number. I use 212, that is my Wira race number for the motorcycle. So after that, we're just gonna click save. And before we jump out of the iRacing website, we'll go to the account section, and under my account is gonna have information that we need for exporting our paint for testing. So we'll see right here that my customer ID is 206268. So save that to a file, make sure you have that handy because we're gonna need that information when we export and test our car. So let's go ahead and jump into Photoshop right now. So now that we have Photoshop open, the first thing we're gonna do is load our resources, which happens to be the brushes and the patterns. So on the left-hand side, we'll click the brush tool. If you click and hold, you get this menu just in case maybe the pencil tool is selected. Just click the brush tool. It'll be worth mentioning that from now on, I will be using the keyboard shortcuts. I will let you know which letter that I select to bring that tool up. Now that we have the brush tool selected though, in the top left section, you'll see a little drop down menu. We'll click that. And over on the right, you'll see a cog or a drop down menu. Click that, and we're gonna click replace brushes. So this brush pack has all the default brushes already in it, so we're just gonna replace everything that's there and load it up. If you go to load it and it has some kind of issue or it says your version is too old to load this, in the description there will be a link to DeviantArt. You can download these brushes individually and they work with all the old versions of Photoshop. Now we're going to move on and first thing we're going to do is expand this paintable area and we'll see main car body color. So that's blue. We don't want blue. We're going to select a new layer and we can hit shift and backspace at the same time and it's gonna bring up our fill option. So now we're gonna just go ahead and load the pattern. So in the drop down, we'll select pattern. We'll click the little drop down menu and here we're gonna click the cog and go to replace patterns as well. So we'll load our pattern that we previously downloaded and these are all of the carbon fiber selections that we'll be using. I tend to prefer the third option over from the left. This one is the nicer pattern in my opinion, but it's all preference. Go through, play, and make sure you have one that you actually enjoy the, uh, the look of. So now that we have that done, we're gonna shift backspace one more time. Not gonna fill it with that pattern. We're going to use foreground color. And here, actually, we're gonna use white. So we'll use the drop down, go to white. Our foreground color is black. I'm gonna show you how to use the eyedropper next. So white, white is my base color. That is the color that I like to paint my cars with as a base. So moving forward, we need to get the correct color of gray for my designs. So I'm gonna go over to my previous painting with the roof. We're gonna hit and hold the eye button. It's gonna give us this little, this picker tool. So we're gonna click and drag, just select one of the gray options that's the color that I use for my brush strokes. 
So we'll come back over here. We're going to go above all these sections and create a new layer. And in that new layer, we're going to create the little folder icon and make a group. Drop it in there. I'm going to call this group uh, KJTV. So it's important that you keep everything organized. And I'm going to make another group. To do this, I'm going to hit Control G, and that's going to place that layer in its own group. And I'm going to call this Grunge. And we're going to call this Grunge underscore 01, because we're going to have many, many Grunge layers. But before we start really going through and painting everything, I'm going to show you the options in terms of what comes in the PSD file when you download it. So the wireframe tool is very important. So you'll see that this puts a wire painting on every piece of car part. So you'll see that it ends here in the green. So anything outside of that wireframe is not going to need paint. It's basically not registered by eye racing. So any paint that spills outside of that wireframe is going to be useless and not shown. So the wireframe is very important for finding curvatures and also where your paint's going to lie if it lies outside of the region that's going to actually be displayed. So you'll see that there's mandatory options here. Those are usually decals, the brake rotors, you know, or just, you know, bits and bobs, things like that. So you can leave that on. You have the car decals. These will be painted in there. You'll see your car number. It's going to say GT1 on the side. These are going to always be there. Don't really have to worry about that. But first off, I would like to start painting the wing section. So before I get to the grunge or anything like that, I'm going to go into this top layer, this top group, and create a new layer. We're going to call this wing. And here, we'll just hit the M tool. And that's going to bring up the rectangular marquee tool. So make sure you click and drag if you need to, if it's not on the rectangular tool. Select that. And what I want to do is I just want to select the wing. So we'll be just inside that wireframe. We'll move it up just a tad just to make sure. And we're going to use shift backspace to use one of our patterns. I like to go with the carbon fiber look on the wing. So we'll just go to pattern. Make sure that we have the third one selected because, again, that's my preferred carbon fiber pattern. And that's it. That's going to take care of the wing. But we also want to get our text on there for the, uh, the channel. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here. Instead of recreating all this text, I'm just going to duplicate the layers. So right-click, duplicate, and we're going to put it in the new PSD for the Aston Martin. So that will move that over here. Now, here's a very important technique and trick. So if you hit Control and T at the same time, it's going to give you the option to spin this. But if you just spin it, you know, it's a little bit hard to get your correct angle. We want 90 degrees. We don't want point, you know, 89.1, 91.3. So hold the Shift button. If you hold the Shift button, it's going to snap every 15 degrees. So that is very helpful for trying to line something up. So we'll do that. Put that there. We're going to turn off our wing layer. So now we'll be able to get that in there and kind of get it centered up. Just like so. So that should be perfect for the wing. No issues there. I'm going to start on the grunge and show you how I get in there and just kind of start painting the car and how everything kind of takes shape. So I'm going to hit B to select the brush tool. I'm going to come down to the drop down menu here. And I know for a fact that I like to have a nice solid bar across the bottom. So to have a nice solid bar across the bottom, I'm looking for a brush that's just going to be a long edge. Now let's see. There's a couple options in here. You're going to want to make sure that it's a fairly long option though. Something probably, let's see this one. So this looks pretty good. We're going to have to transform it just because it's tilted at an angle, but that's not a big deal. So we're just going to click, put that in there. We're going to hit Control T to bring up our transform tool. This one we're not going to hold Shift for because it's at a kind of a funky angle to begin with. So we'll just kind of drag that where we see fit. So we'll notice that that doesn't really look that good. It just looks like it's placed there just, and it just doesn't fit. It's got that hard edge. So the way that we're going to take care of that is we're going to hit the E tool, and that is our eraser over here. So you can click and hold and make sure that the eraser tool is selected, not any of the other selections. We're going to come up to the brush options. 
we're just going to find something that's going to kind of hide that edge. We're going to blend that edge in just a little bit. This one right here seems to do the trick. Notice that it's, it's kind of big. So what we're going to do is you can hit the left bracket that's near the backslash button, just under backspace. And you can make it larger with the right bracket, smaller with the left bracket, or you can come back up to the brush option menu and you can just adjust size right here just by sliding it back and forth. So we're just going to dial that up just a little bit, going to bring it in and just kind of knock that edge down just a little bit to get a little bit of a blend. So you're probably going to have to click a couple times. That way it just kind of starts fading in there just a little bit. We're going to get a little bit more, a little bit more brushwork going on in here. It's going to be something that you just pile on and pile on and pile on. So I'm going to add a new brush, new layer. I'm going to just try to keep everything tidy. It's very, very difficult to keep everything tidy, but we're going to go ahead and try. So we're going to click in here. We're going to just use our control T to transform it. Just need that hard edge towards the bottom. I wouldn't mind it kind of coming up the back section as well. So we'll just freeform it, put it in there just like that. And we're going to hit the eraser tool, which is E. We're just going to kind of feather things in there, give it a nicer edge. And just feathering it in there, it's going to take a couple strokes to probably blend it in the way that you'd like. A lot of this stuff is going to be just covered up or it's not really seen in fine detail. So nobody's really going to take the time and probably just pixel peep at your design. So it's worth noting that you're probably not going to have to get everything perfect. It's best to get it as perfect as possible, but for the most part, people aren't going to take that close of a look at it. So get in here, we're going to get a little bit more of a, probably just a bigger splotch that we're going to put in there. Let's see. All this is certainly just trial and error. It's all subjective. You just go in there and you really start just piecing things together. So here's, here's a relatively large brush. So we're going to use a little bit on the front fender and probably on the hood. Again, we're going to go through and delete quite a bit. I don't really like the way that brush looks, so we will not use that one. Let's see. I tend to like these. So we'll get some there. I think I need a little bit more on the fender here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just get a little bit of this done, show you how to load it into iRacing, go over some details in iRacing, and then just kind of give you guys a quick time lapse of the whole process here. Going through and just kind of masking some of the sections just a little bit. And if you wanted to, you can make the brush larger by using the open bracket. You can change the opacity, you can change it down to where it doesn't flow as much, 48%, and you can get in there and you can, you'll probably want to click a couple times to just kind of get a nice blend going on. That way you can soften things up just a little bit if you wanted to. For me, I think I did a little bit too much blending, so I have the history tool open in the top left here. If you don't see that, you can go in here and select history. It'll pop up on your screen. I'm just going to scroll up a little bit probably remove some of that eraser just like that so we'll leave it like this one of the next things that I'll always do is I will take my my logo for the channel and put it in there so we're gonna come here we're just gonna duplicate the layer so we're gonna right click duplicate group we're gonna copy it to the Aston Martin template so now we have this huge huge circle we're gonna call this KJTV underscore logo and we're going to want that pretty much above everything so we it's very important for layer ordering that it's above all the other layers because we want this to never be hidden never covered up so we'll go just like this and we'll transform it there for now what we're going to do to get the proper placement of this we'll put it up here for right now we're going to turn off our grunge section and we'll see that there's inserts there's cutouts so we're going to try to place this right about here, still staying within our margins. We're going to make it a little bit smaller. 
place it about right dead center of all that. We'll probably have to go in there and adjust because of the way it's cut out. It might not look quite right, but it's something that we'll end up dialing in just a little bit later. So it's nothing to worry about right now. There's going to be a lot of fine tuning as soon as we get into iRacing. So with that said, this is the basic construction and how things go. What you're going to do is you're just going to go through and make many, many more crunch layers, quite a bit more. Don't be afraid to get in there with the brush and just start splattering it around, doing anything that you feel is going to look good. And if it doesn't look good, just roll it back. You have the history section in the top right or wherever it is on your screen. You can roll it back. You can create snapshots. So you can always get to where you want to. Or the best thing you can do is just make sure you have most of the grunge done on separate layers. That way you can toggle them on and off. If you don't like this one, well, then you just remove it or you put it back if you like it. <clears throat> so aside from that, we need to save this out so we can check it in iRacing. So we're going to go to File, Save As. We'll go here. We need to make sure it's a Targa, so a TGA file. We're going to scroll up to our documents. We're going to type in iRacing. We're going to go into the Paint folder, Aston Martin. So when we started out, we said you need to have your account number. So you wrote that down. All you're going to do is type in car underscore your number, which mine happens to be 206268. You're going to save that out. OK, all the default settings are just fine. And now let's jump into iRacing and see what we have. So in my haste to save out the file, I forgot to turn the wireframe off. This will show on the car. It's worth noting that in the group that says turn off before exporting, you should click the little I button right next to the folder and it's going to hide all of that stuff. Only your design will be left. So now we can save everything out and not have the wireframe on the car. Now that we're in iRacing, click the test button. We'll get in the car and now we're just going to hold escape and escape out. We'll use the fast forward button and now our car's on track and we're in it. We'll hit the control F12 button that's going to bring up our camera options. So now we can use the WASD buttons and just kind of float around the car or you can use these buttons up here. So this one will go in and out, this one will go left and right, and this one will go back or I'm sorry, it'll point down and up. So now we can see our design. We can hit spacebar to hide the UI and we can just kind of float around and take a look at our design and see how everything is. We'll see that the logo is in the wing. It looks pretty good. We'll just pivot this up. We'll look down on it. We'll spin around here. It is in the middle of the wing. Looking pretty good. I will more than likely go back and just nudge it up just a little bit. But that looks pretty good. So we can just kind of fly around and just inspect our design and see where we're having some issues. So here, we're going to have to address how the logo shows up because it's just, just not enough showing with those cutouts. Not a big deal. So again, you can just kind of float around and make changes as you see fit. So if we go back into Photoshop right now, we can move the wing down. That can be a start. Actually, I think we want it up a little bit. And I will turn the wireframe back on. I'm just going to go in here. I'm going to add a little bit more grunge to this. Because we need just a little bit more going on to see what is working and what really isn't. Let's scale that down. Put that on back quarter panel there, go through, change our opacity, make sure it's at 100%, just kind of blend that in just a little bit better, just like that, get a little bit more going on here, have a new layer, it's best to add as many layers as you can, there's no reason not to add a new layer for every brush, in fact that's going to give you the most control, it might take the most time, but it's going to give you the most control over the design. Because you'll be able to go back, toggle on layers, turn them off as you see fit. And it really will help you just kind of fine tune everything later on. Come in here. We'll kind of mess with the front fender just a little bit. Just get a little bit in there. This is where you can act like your Bob Ross. You can make a couple brush strokes. And eventually you'll have 
happy trees. It's all about the happy paint. Get in there, put a little bit more in there, pull it back just a little bit. So with this KJTV logo, I will spin it here 90 degrees. We're gonna put it on the door. So we're gonna hide the grunge layer real quick. And we're just gonna put it on the door somewhere. Probably about there. And then we'll bring the logos over in a little bit and see how everything looks. But I wanted to show you guys that you can go in here, make some adjustments, save everything back out. So we'll save it back to the iRacing folder in documents. So iRacing, paint, Aston, and then my car happens to be all the way at the bottom. Eventually you'll know where your file is. So we can go back into iRacing and hit Control R. So that's going to reload our paint and now you'll see that our logo is on the side and our modifications have been made. We'll be able to come up here, spin around, take a look at our at our wing here. That lines up quite well. And this is the basis of everything. So everything just kind of starts from this position and then you just slowly start adding on. So we're, we're gonna end up having to find a nicer position for our KJ, uh, KJ logo here. Cause it just kind of clashes a bit with the, the number on the side. So we'll find out a better section for that. But before I do that, I wanna show you guys the camera pack. So you've downloaded and installed the camera pack. The way you use it, if you hit control F12, it'll bring up your camera menu here. You can click load track, load the camera system in there. And then you'll be able to, you have to hide the camera. So hit control F12. And now you have all these options. So you have dynamic, you have, you know, all these new options, but screenshot. So it's going to give it that nice tilt. It's going to give that nice field of view. And then all you need to do is just drive it around somewhere nice, and there you go. I highly recommend playing with your field of view. So the more zoomed in you get, the more you'll be able to play with depth of field. So that's when you go in, change the aperture to a really low setting, you'll have a just where it starts blurring, you'll notice you can change the focus. So if you just put it on the car, the background back there is starting to blur out. So that's something that you can play with. But the shots that work the best are with the, the lower field of view. It's gonna kind of compress the background and make everything look nicer. So it's best to do that. But aside from that, in iRacing, that covers the screenshots, that covers updating your car. Now really all you have to do is put in the time and finish up the paint, which is what I'm gonna do in Photoshop right now. So as you're going through and just fine tuning your paint, it's best to go through and save it often and check in iRacing. Things can be swapped out pretty easily and it's very easy to do if you make multiple layers. When saving things out on multiple layers, it's also easy to use that design as a base. Like you saw earlier, I used the KJTV and I was able to duplicate that to other designs and reuse those specific resources. So it's best not to get discouraged. It is a time consuming project. Sometimes you'll, you'll definitely wanna take a break, walk away and have fresh eyes when you look at it and start working on it again. You'll see things that you didn't notice and it can be a great way to increase the quality of your paint. So in the description, there's a link to many resources on DeviantArt. You can find different brushes, different patterns. Perhaps grunge is not your design of choice. There are many resources available. You can definitely find a design that catches your eye. So take these tips and techniques and really get out there and experiment. The whole key to this is to make the design your own. So there it is. Your design is ready to go. Make sure you go to tradingpaints.com, register for the service, upload your car, and if you want other people to be able to use your design, make sure you upload it to the showroom section. Trading Paints is a fantastic service and something you need to have always running so everybody can see your hard work and you can see everybody else's hard work as well. So if this tutorial has helped you out at all, please click the like button. Make sure you follow us on Twitter, on Twitch. Check us out on Facebook, all the social media. Definitely check us out. And if you've had any kind of problems or you couldn't follow along through a specific section, please post a comment below and I will definitely help you out as quickly as possible. But until next time, I'll see you guys on stream.